Good afternoon. My name is Rashid Fazuldin from TALIS UK, and uh, I'll be sharing uh, some results that we achieved on the uh, Magnus program. So the uh, Magnus program was uh, 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 a European Defence Ag Agency program concerned with uh, European sourcing of uh, GAN MMICs and associated packaging. Uh, this was the second such program uh, following on from the uh, Corrigan program, uh, which ran from 2005 to 2009. The foundry used was UMS, and the process was GH25 underscore 10, quarter micron pro process. Uh, the design kits were available in both AWR and ADS, and uh, we obviously are using AWR. Uh, we were allowed two foundry runs, five countries participated. Um, so these were the countries and the companies within um, each country. So we had Talis UK and, and Celex from the um, UK. Uh, from France we had um, Talis Air Systems and uh, and Talis System Air Portis. We had Talis Netherlands, uh, Airbus, and um, Saab up here. So we at Talis UK um, were, um, the specifications initially set were, we were aiming for, we were aiming for frequency range of six to 18 gig, gigahertz and a 10 dB gain and 10 dB output power. So uh, we decided to go for a, a, a non-uniform distributed amplifier topology. This is ideally suited to uh, broadband operation, uh, inherently stable. Um, we decided to, um, uh, on the first one, uh, well, yeah, we, our aim was to design two uh, distributors amplifiers and 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 um, combine these. And on the first run, the combine the combining was done off chip, and on the second run, the combining was done on chip. So a bit about the uh, non-uniform distributed amplifiers, so similar to the uniform distributed amplifiers. So we have uh, um, interconnected uh, FETs in parallel interconnected with uh, inductive elements uh, to form artificial gate and drain transmission lines. Uh, the bandwidth is set by the gate transmission line um, since the FETS CGS is much greater than the FETS CDS. Um, with the nonlinear um, distributed amplifier, we, we taper the, the drain line uh, such that each FET sees uh, an optimum impedance for P out or, uh, or efficiency. Um, on the gate, on the gate we have these additional, uh, we also taper the gate line with these capacitors and, and these are just to equalize the power so they all go into saturation approximately uh, together. Um, this has the effect of lowering the gain of the amplifier since um, these capacitors are now in series with the, uh, the, the, the capacitor or the CGS of the FET. Uh, but this has the um, advantage of increasing the bandwidth since we've effectively lowered uh, the input capacitance. And this is a well-documented technique. Um, so this is basically showing schematic of a non-distributed, non-uniform distributed amplifier. And uh, this is the approach we were taking, where we had two such amplifiers uh, between a pair of um, splitter combiners. So this was um, the layout uh, for the first run. And um, uh, so this is the, um, the drain line, and this is the gate line. And we have these um, capacitors in, in series with uh, with each FET. We also have a, a shunt resistor, uh, sh um, uh, uh, which is for, the, for supplying bias to each FET. Um, so this, most of this is taken from um, the FETs and this um, 
inductor is taken from the design kit. We had to design our own high current inductor here, and this was achieved um, using uh, the AWR EM tools. So all of these structures were uh, simulated in, in a AWR's axiom. Um, so this is the, uh, the drain line. Uh, we also um, simulated a uh, Lange coupler, and that's the high current inductor. And so these are the results we achieved on the, on the first run. So um, th that was this, uh, the magenta is the simulated gain, which is around 10, which is slightly greater than 10 dB. And, and, and th these are all the uh, measurements um, for S21. Um, so it's really good tie up between the simulated and uh, uh, the measured. And similarly, this is for um, S22. And here we have the results for S21. You see all the peaks and troughs are tracking very well with the simulated data. And here we have the, a plot of stability. Um, the um, output power and power added efficiency also tied up very well with the um, simulation. So we more or less achieved five watts for a single ended device, um, some roll off at the 18 gig end, and more or less greater than 20 dB efficiency across the band. And this is showing the results for, for all chips. Um, saturated power at P4 dB and power added efficiency. Uh, we also put down some test structures. Um, so we've got our Lange coupler here and various um, calibration um, standards here. And um, so this is the, um, the founded results for the Lange coupler. And you can see that the crossover points match with what we simulated very well. Um, and as does the, um, the phase difference between the, um, the, the two outputs of the Lange coupler. So um, to summarize, the first foundry run, um, greater than 10.5 dB gain, uh, flat frequency response, um, less than 1 dB spread for all, all, all the chips, and um, good input and output return loss and uh, obviously it was um, stable for the k factor um, we achieved five watts um, for a single entity device um, and again um, only half a db spread for all all results approximately 20 db um, saturated output uh, 20% 20, 20 power added efficiency, and the electrical yield was 100%, and good correlation for the Lange coupler with our simulation. So this was uh, the second run. Uh, the second run, um, the design kit was um, changed to from version 2 to version 3.1, and there's a um, slight difference in the geometries now of the, of the, of the FETs from the the first run, um, and uh, um, th these are the simulated results of the of the of the Lange coupler. So these are the on wafer results. So again, excellent tie up with the, with the simulation for both gain and return loss, and um, also excellent. Si tie up with this time with the um, with the output power um, all the way up to 18 gigs so no, no roll off there and th and this was the maximum power that um, UMS could supply so it's not this is not at p4 DB so we'd expect this to rise probably to the the, the full 10 watts that we'll be looking <coughs> for so we also did some packaging um, uh, th this is the first run f um, mimic packaged um, and um, this was also simulated in um, 
in AWR's anal analyst and simulator. Um, we, we, we simulated this with a, um, a through line, and that's just a, a detail of the ceramic port and a tape onto the transmission line. Um, and that's the um, package with the lid on it. Um, so um, that's showing the results with without the lid and with the lid. With, um, is, we've got a resonance at um, sort of 18 gigahertz, which we did see in practice. Um, so the last um, part of the uh, program was to design a demonstrator which would take these mimics and 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 um, perform some function. So at Talus UK, we designed a 30 watt uh, MPM uh, demonstrator using the the uh, mimics, and so we've essentially got um, four lots of mimics at the output combined into this low loss combiner, and we've designed in these uh, uh, Wilkinson power dividers, which were all designed in AWR. And that's just showing you the response we got. Um, so that was the uh, the, the demonstrator. Um, so uh, we've got all the, the, the four mimics here and the uh, power dividers going into a low loss uh, power combiner. And this was all, as I said, simulated in microwave office. Uh, the results for the the demonstrator we we got a gain of between 40 and 33 dBm and uh, a return loss input and output of better than 10 dB. Um, and the power, measured power was um, in from six to 18 gigs. We did get the um, 30 watts. So to conclude, um, you know, uh, this shows that we've, um, the, the UMS's design kit was very accurate and also um, supported by very accurate models within AWR led to the success of this project. Thank you.